welcome to Wildlife Wednesday. I'm PJ with ZooFit and we've got special guest Chris here to join us today for a very special holiday Bah Humbug edition of Wildlife Wednesday. Bah Humbug. <laughs> a famous saying of Ebenezer Scrooge but a great way to celebrate the holidays and celebrate Wildlife Wednesday by, uh, by focusing all about bugs or insects today. So we have a, a special flea circuit workout designed for us. But let's get started first, uh, start with a nice warm up. Um, again, insect themed, we're gonna start off with some, uh, what I call uh, bee lines. And so what we're gonna do, we're, and we're gonna be doing this inside, if you have room, by all means you can take up, uh, do a little bit more of a, more running. But what we're gonna do is kind of running back and forth from uh, different spots back to our home base. So we've got a couple of different spots that we can run to the front of the mat and then run back and then run all the way to the front of the camera and then run back and run back and then go back and forth. So, or you can get do this in place or you can go, go outside. You can have even longer stretches. We're gonna do this for just about about 20 more seconds. <laughs> so we're actually kind of simulating that we are bees. We're going from flower, bringing the nectar back home, going back out, getting some more, and just getting our heart rate up a little bit. Ooh, I'm feeling that. <laughs> and getting some of those wiggles out. All right, guys. <laughs> Who's warmed up? <laughs> Guys, have a great day. <laughs> Next, we're gonna do some, some stretching. If we want to warm up our body before we start stretching and before we start doing a workout. So now let's do some nice stretching with some inchworms. And you know, there's many different ways you can do inchworms. Pick your level. But initially what we're gonna do, is you place your hands on the ground. You can do this by hinging or by slightly bending your legs, whichever way is easier, fits you the best. Place your hands on the ground, walk your hands to a plank, and then you can either do a push up, and then walk our hands back in. That's, that's, one, that's one option. You can come back down. I'm, I'm actually going to kind of do a little bit of a lumbar stretch. Bring my hand back to the ground, walk out to the plank. Here's option two, rather than, uh, rather than doing a push-up, gradually let your legs, let your knees come to the ground and stretch out your back. Arms are straight, so, and uh, my shoulders are kind of down. Bring that back up. I'm gonna walk my hands, walk my hands in, and then roll up. That's option two. And then one last option is to come down. Once again, I'm kind of curling my back, doing a little bit of forward fold. Hands come to the ground, but hands walk out only halfway to a plank. Coming up into that height position, I'm going to what we call downward dog. And then shifting, walking my hands a little bit more of that plank, shifting to what they call cobra. And then coming back up to walk, uh, walk, walking our hands in. So there's a couple more options. We'll do one more inchworm. You can choose whatever level feels right for you. I'm gonna do that plank push up. And then walk back in. And roll up. All right, we have one more insect inspired stretch for us before we get truly started with the workout that is called a scorpion yep i think well i think they might be closer to arachnids there is something for me to look up on the way after after class <laughs> but we're going to so we're going to come to the ground and we're going to place our chest to the ground our arms are going to come out so if you're wor working with a partner <laughs> With your, with your grown-ups or with your partner, you can hold hands, you can, <laughs> you can pat each other on the back. But our hands are stretched out, 
And to do a scorpion stretch, all we're going to do is lift. I'm going to lift. This is my left leg, so studio left. Lifting my left leg and then bringing it across my right side, keeping my shoulders on the ground, and then stretching that out. That just kind of feels good on my back. I'm feeling a little bit in my, a little bit in my quads. Holding it for just a few more seconds, and then switching over. So I'm going to lift my right leg up, cross it over my left side, keeping my shoulders on the floor, and then holding it still. I'm on the rower. You're on the rower. <laughs> and until you feel that nice deep stretch, and then release. We'll do that one more time on each side, guys. I think I just kicked the cat. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not sure. And this is again another reason why you want, ideally want some, uh, some space for your workout. Switch sides and then to the other side. Ah. And relax. There we go. All stretched out. All warmed up and we're ready to take on the bah humbug or what i call a flea circuit instead of a circus what the circuit does is we're going to have five exercises those five exercises are going to uh, after we do all five of those eight, five rounds of each exercise we're going to get a full minute of rest and then we're going to repeat those extra repeat that circuit two more times. So a total of three circuit, three times through the circuit. Uh, we got five different exercises. So we got our grasshoppers. It's gonna be our first exercise. It's gonna hit our core quite a bit and actually working our shoulders a little bit. Then we're gonna get some ant carries. So yeah, uh, we are gonna need something. Now we'll go over this. It can be weights if you guys have weights at home perfect but if not don't worry about it we will work with you find something that you have at home that you can do some ant carries with then we're going to do some more core work some butterfly sit-ups and then we're going to hop around like fleas <laughs> we're going to do some flea hops and then our last one again last core exercise is an upside down beetle again uh, this is often known as a dead bug but dead bugs don't move we are upside down beetles. All right, and then we get our minute rest. So let's go over these real quick and we'll get started. All right, guys, our first exercise is a grasshopper. So we're gonna start in a plank position. And, um, and this is similar to uh, mountain climbers and even spider planks, but instead of coming elbow to one, to the uh, knee to elbow, we're gonna cross our body and touch the opposite elbow with our knee. So we're going to bring that opposite knee to the opposite elbow across that body and simulating something we're going to learn a little bit about grasshoppers. So that's going to be the grasshopper. If you need to modify, you can put it on an incline. You can even do this against the wall. If you absolutely need to, you can come up onto an incline. Again, bringing your knee to the opposite elbow across the body. That will kind of uh, alleviate a lot of the intensity onto, onto our core. I think it helps you and you work that, uh, work that movement a little bit easier until you're ready to do a full on grasshopper. Um, next one is going to be ant carries. All right guys, we've got weights in our hand, but you can use anything that you have at home. You can use books. Uh, you can even use uh, a heavy you know, again, container bag of apples um, that you can carry in your hand or in front of you. So you can do this in front or to the side, whichever works best for you. So what we're going to be doing for a full minute, carrying our items, we're just going to step in place. We're going to be ants marching, carrying our, our objects. So again, I've got mine in front. Chris is holding his at his side. One minute marching in place with our weight really important with this i'll remind us shoulders back 
Even if you're holding it out front, keep those shoulders back, chest up as we march in place again. So that's going to be our ant carries. All right, guys, our third station and our circuit, our butterfly sit up. So I'm going to be in a butterfly position. My feet are touching each other and my knees are as close to the floor as possible. And if you need to keep, keep your knees up, that's perfectly okay. Butterflies flap their wings. <laughs> so that's perfectly okay. Whatever is your butterfly is perfect for you. But this is again, trying to get our, our knees as close to the ground as you can. We're going to come all the way down to the floor, bring our hands to overhead to, our, uh, to touch the ground, and then we're going to sit up and touch your toes. Now, if this does get too much for you, um, you can always revert to a crunch. So again, keeping that butterfly feet, you just lay on the side and then crunch up, pressing my head into my hands and my hand into my head, kind of both supporting that neck, protecting, the, protecting my neck as I do my butterfly crunches. But if you're able to, sit up all the way for a butterfly sit up. Our fourth station are flea hops. So fleas are a really powerful animal, can hop really, really high. So we're going to try and hop as high as we can too. We're, again, we don't necessarily need to jump out, but we're going to try to jump as high as we can. So you can jump up. And if, you, if you're comfortable, you can even tuck your feet underneath you as you jump. Um, if there's a feeling that uh, you're going to see me go into just a lighter jump, I'm asking, I showed you that to, to, to show you what you can do. If that is a, too much of an impact on your knees, again, go down to a lighter jump. We're just going to hop and again, working on that impact, again, landing as softly as we can. We're going for a full minute of flea hops. Last but not least, we have our upside down bugs. So for our upside down beetles, I'll try, I'll show you from both angles. We're gonna be on our backs. Our legs are gonna be in a table, what we call tabletop position. So your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle. So when we get called tabletop, and our hands are straight out in front of us. Now performing, again, imagining if you've ever seen an upside down beetle, they're kind of flailing their arms and legs, are kind of flailing their legs a bit. So we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to move our opposite arm and opposite leg <laughs> as I tickle my husband. <laughs> and then we bring it back to center and then we go the opposite direction. So I've got my left arm, my right leg stretching out and we're kind of in the center. So you can again pick up the pace just like a flailing upside down beetle. Or you can again, keep it nice and steady, nice and easy. Concentrating on keeping our core tight and then just having a little bit of fun. After, after our upside down beetles, we get a minute of rest and then we're gonna go through those all over again. You guys ready? Let's get started. All right, guys, we got our timer started. They're going to go for one minute, and then we get a quick little break in between before the next set so we can get, kind of reset ourselves, get in position. So you guys ready? Three, two, one. We're starting with our grasshoppers plank position, and we're crossing over our bodies. And um, this is, uh, again, first fun fact about grasshoppers as we're doing this, <laughs> is that this motion is actually um, how, how many grasshoppers communicate with each other. Uh, if you've ever heard a grasshopper, what you're actually hearing is their back legs um, f uh, strumming their forewings or against their body. So this is what they're actually doing. This quite, th similar to this motion, to make their, their singing noises. Pretty cool. Oh, 
that's our 10 second warning they've got. <laughs> yeah, this is tough. <laughs> Two, one, and we're switching to the ant carry. So grab your weights once again at your side or in front of you. We're going for a minute of ant carries marching in place. Once again, ants, ants are really great for strength training, they're kind of a symbol for strength training. They can lift 20 times their body weight. That's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> that would be like you and me lifting a car over our heads and carrying it. That's incredible. Those are our ants. So this again, practicing an ant carry is really inspiring. It helps us get a little bit stronger. Maybe one day we too can lift a car. All right, guys, we're switching over to our butterfly sit-ups. Weights down, sitting on the floor. Once again, wherever your butterfly wings are is perfectly okay. You can be doing crunches. You can go watch. Chris is doing crunches, so you can do the full sit up or the crunch, whatever works for you. The butterflies are sometimes uh, not thought of when people think of bugs and insects, but yes, they are indeed part of the insect family. And they're actually a very, very important part if not just for, for, for their looks, but for what they do for us and, uh, and farms. They're a pollinator. And we'll learn a little bit more about pollination as we continue on. But yes, without the, without the butterflies, we wouldn't have a lot of the food that we appreciate, uh, we appreciate eating today. So thank the butterfly, and let's move on. We got our flea hops. Everybody jump, jump up, <laughs> literally, <laughs> get ready, and then let's go. Again, your level, if you want to do those tuck jumps, awesome. Be a flea, jump up as high as you can, but like a flea, we're going to protect ourselves and land softly. Protect the tree, too. <laughs> protect, the, protect my tree, too. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I mentioned that fleas can jump high, but I didn't mention how high. 150 times the length of their body. Wow. So that would be like us jumping over an 80 to 100 story building. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> yep, literally. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. If a flea were the size of a human, that's how high they would be able to jump. That'd be really scary. All right, guys. We've got to rest right after this last round, last, uh, last exercise. Upside down beetles. Ready? Legs up. And again, your level. If you want to go fast, great. If you want to go slow, nice and slow. Work up to that too. I don't have a whole lot of information on beetles other than they are the most numerous insect on the planet. Literally thousands of different types of beetles exist. Wow. Yes. Now, insects in general are among the most numerous, well, they are the most numerous. Um, type of animal. They're, uh, they they literally rule the world. <laughs> but beetles are king of the insects, in my opinion. All right, guys, ten more seconds, and we get a full minute rest. Actually, actually a minute twenty second rest. So this timer is going to go off and. Three, Ready. two, one, and now our minute rest begins now. 
grab some water, and we'll get started in just a minute. I've got my notes here. <laughs> I'm cheating. <laughs> Uh, insects aren't my strongest knowledge point. <laughs> they are fascinating animals, but they're not something that I've, I've spent a lot of time studying. So, if you have questions about them, drop them in the comments down below. I'll see if I can answer them <laughs> for you. If not, Google is your friend. <laughs> Guys, we're getting back to the grasshoppers in 10 seconds. So you go ahead and get in position. Yeah, that, that, that third, that timer always tricks me too. We're going now. We're going to those grasshoppers. We're going through all these again. How many rounds? Three rounds. Three rounds. Three rounds. Three of each exercise with a minute rest. The grasshoppers are not far off from fleas as far as their amazing ability to jump. But they don't jump up. They jump across. So they are thought to measure, their, their jumps measure about one full meter. Considering their size and comparing it to us, that'd be like us leaping the length of a football field. Whew. I hear you, Chris. I need that rest too. So think about that also and how amazing these animals are and able to jump. So they use their back legs as catapults. Again, jumping up to a meter in length. We're going back to those ant carries. You can grab your weight. I'm going to begin to show you how easy you can do this. Grab an object. And then I'm going to make it a little bit harder for me by pushing it out in front of me. So again, holding it out, just marching in place. And I forgot to look at the facts for ants. Ants, like bees, are the only truly social animals on the planet. They are what we call eusocial, which means truly social. And that means that they literally cannot survive without each other. You know, we are humans, we are social animals. But if we absolutely had to, we could survive without another human being. Ants, bees, and even naked mole rats literally cannot survive without their colony. Ready? Right guys, back to our butterfly sit-ups. Uh, again, your level. And I've got another fun fact about our butterflies. <laughs> I said I was going to do this. <laughs> but the monarch butterfly is a really, again, beautiful butterfly, um, but also has a special ability. The food it eats is milkweed, which is a toxic plant. Now they're able to do this. Um, they, eat the, they eat the milkweed, and that makes them toxic to their predators. So they actually literally eat a toxic plant just so they can be protected from being eaten. <laughs> Which is a really great adaptation for them, protects them, and makes sure that it ensures their survival. All right, we're going to do those flea, flea jumps. Ready? All right. And you know, why would I include fleas? One of, the, one of the worst parasites, literally, on the planet. They are considered a parasite. They feed off of the blood of other animals. That's kind of the very definition of a parasite. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> Parasites are animals or organisms that feed off of other animals or other organisms. So again, feeding off the blood of others, of other animals, that's, a, that's fleas and so that makes them a parasite. They can't cause quite a bit of harm. 
They are thought to have started the Black Plague. Oh. <laughs> and uh, caused other irritations as well. All right, guys, last round for Upside Down Beetles. about how insects impact our lives in general. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to try to uh, try to eliminate them from uh, from their home. Understandable. We don't want bugs in our food. <laughs> um, or garden. Or garden. <laughs> but they can be very beneficial. And there are natural ways to get rid of them. Again, for instance, if you have spiders in the area, those are great to have. Dragonflies are another great animal to have around, as dragonflies eat mosquitoes and gnats. So if you live in an area that has dragonflies, find ways to attract them, and you can get rid of a lot of your other pests. Ah, one minute rest. round starting with our grasshoppers if again I been watching we've been doing it full on if you need to come up to that uh, come up to an incline cross over um, then make this your own we have one last fun fact about grasshoppers I um, in many other countries including or many other continents in South America and Africa grasshoppers are their main source of protein Yum. <laughs> they actually are. Uh, insects are the most numerous animal protein on the planet. So many places, including even in the United States, are looking at ways that we can uh, make this protein available and uh, palatable, what we call, what we would might refer to as edible, tasty, um, tasty ways to eat insects, including grasshoppers. All right, guys, 10 more seconds. We got this. Keep going. Try and keep going to the very end. I know it's hard. Done with the grasshoppers. They can fry them and wrap them in bacon. Yes. Right. <laughs> He's the purpose. All right, shoulders <laughs> back. We're marching in place. That's Did you know that ants can't hear? <laughs> well, they don't have ears. There we go. Ants don't have ears. So do you know how they hear? I don't know. It's going to take a while to guess. How would you hear? Vibration? Yeah, there you go. If you couldn't hear, how would, if you couldn't have, if you didn't have ears, how would you hear? You would listen through the vibrations through the, In the ground? Through their, on the ground, through their, through their feet. Oh, wow. Yeah. They also are able to find their way by leaving a natural scent called pheromones as a trail to go from where they find their food to get back to their home. They are a pretty amazing animal. <laughs> the more you learn. <laughs> All right guys, get done with the, with the ants. We're going back to another one last core exercise. Our butterflies. Again, working on your level, whether you have uh, butterfly wings that are open or closed. And again, working on that closed butterfly wings. This is actually one of the ways that butterflies protect themselves, is that they close up their wings and then they actually <laughs> virtually disappear uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. from their predators. And when they're looking at them head on, it's kind of neat <laughs> defense mechanism or at least a way to hide. Other butterflies, as you might be aware of, use something what we call mimicry. And that is that they mimic either a poisonous or poisonous animal. So it kind of tells the, their predators, don't eat me. Or it mimics a bigger animal than they really are. Such as eyes of a larger bird. And then we have one last flea hop. 
And most, a lot of the different animals use mimicry. <laughs> Here, Chris is worried about the tree. Hoppa, hoppa, hoppa. I don't want the tree to fall. Yeah. That's so pretty. Bah, humbug. <laughs> One last thing about fleas. Fleas have been around for about 80 million years. Wow. So they have been irritating animals since the days of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and they're, but they, back then, were actually much bigger. Can you imagine like a, I don't know, a kitty sized flea? <laughs> oh, jeez. I can't imagine how big they actually were, but <laughs> they were called giant fleas. And yeah, they fed on the dinosaur blood. So, wow. again, things you things you learn <laughs> from Wildlife Wednesdays. All right, guys, one last exercise. Ready? Ready. Ready. As I mentioned one last time, uh, we mentioned this about the butterflies. And even in the last round, insects really truly benefit our lives in ways that we uh, we can't even imagine, we can't even begin to imagine. But first and foremost, we need bugs. We need them for the food we eat, for even some in some instances the clothes we wear. Uh, we wouldn't have. Ooh, we wouldn't have a silk. We wouldn't have. Um, we wouldn't have most of the food that we eat. Honey. We would not have honey. We wouldn't have chocolate. We wouldn't have strawberries. We wouldn't have our favorite foods if it were not for insects. So we got less than ten seconds, guys. Let's keep going. And we are done. Ooh. Ooh. Our flea circuit kind of showed off the, the true benefits and the wonders, actually amazing aspects of bugs, of insects. So guys, a happy Bah Humbug to all of you. Thanks for joining us. Bah Humbug. <laughs> happy holidays from us at here at ZooFit, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.